The world of Gelenor is extremely large, and with so many skills, there are many activities to do throughout the world. I figured I would compile, to the best of my ability, a, a list of different methods at varying levels for every skill in the game that can show you how to make good money no matter what level you are. Starting off with agility, honestly there aren't too many ways with agility to make money. There, I, I would say there's two main ways. The best way, unfortunately being at high levels, especially with level 92 agility earning you the most, upwards of 3 mil an hour, is by running floor 5 of the Hallowed Sepulchre. Uh, there's a chance at the Grand Coffin at the very, very end to get a Ring of Endurance. The ring is currently selling for th over 36 mil, and I think the chance is like 1 in 200. Um, so, that would be the best method. The second method would be just doing rooftop courses. You will get Marks of Grace as you complete them. A Mark of Grace, I think, appro sells approximately around like 10k GP. I think you can, you can exchange 10 Marks of Grace for a pack of Amelies. Pack of Amelies is about 65k, because you get 100 Amelies. And you get roughly 15 to 18 Marks of Grace, maybe a little more, depending on the course. The best course is being Canifis, and then if you're very high agility, with the correct diary done, I believe the Ardone course is a little better. But Canifis is probably the best. So after agility, would be attack, but I'm not going to be including the, the combat skills, uh, mainly because you can group them up all together. Um, so attack, strength, defense, hit points, even ranged. I will be including magic because magic is kind of a unique skill, but for the most part, and even including prayer, I'm not going to... They, they can all be grouped together, but I will say it's no secret that combat is by far the best moneymaker in all of Old School RuneScape. It's not even close. Like, especially if you can get to the top tiers of raids, especially with the new raid, uh, Tombs of a Mascot, if you're able to get to uh, the top, uh, like the top difficulty settings, such as uh, level 500, and you're able to do it solo, this could be over 20 mil an hour. Killing Nex is like 15 mil an hour. Killing Mex uh, with a party is a little less, but I mean it's still well over 10 mil an hour. Again, Tombs of Masca, even with a group, is 10 mil an hour. Theater of Blood is over 5 mil an hour. Clear, way over 5 mil an hour. Chambers of Zerik is 5 mil an hour. Corrupted Gauntlet is like 4 mil an hour. Nightmares 4 mil an hour. Hydra is like 3 mil an hour. All of these bosses are several mil an hour and up. And, you know, it, they are quite late game. But if combat is something you enjoy, you are not going to be falling short with money. What your problem is going to be when you're getting to that point is affording all the, all the, the gear. But that comes in time. Cookie, on the other hand, is a little better. With all levels being decently profitable, you're not going to see any gigantic methods in this skill, but for the most part, if you're looking to just get a little bit of GP and get some extremely high experience rates, cooking is definitely a great skill to start with. You can begin at level 30 cooking tuna or making plain pizzas, and you're going to look to see anywhere between like 100,000 GP an hour to maybe a little more like 125k. You can go a little higher. You can even start with uh, one tick karamba ones. You can start cooking them at 30, although you're really going to burn quite a lot and you want the higher levels cooking the, the better. Uh, you can see in this footage right here, one tick uh, cooking karamba ones is extremely fast, pretty intensive, but you can get up to maybe like seven, 800,000 GP profit per hour, depending on how many of these you're going to burn. Again, I would not recommend doing this at level 30, even though you can cook them, you're going to burn a lot. Wait until you're higher level so you can do tuna. And then uh, at level 62, you can do Monkfish. You're going to get about the same profit, but more XP. A little higher. If you want to get to 84, you can do Anglerfish, which will be about 300k an hour. Uh, all of these methods are very high XP. Cooking is an extremely fast skill to get really high. And then you can go towards something like one to uh, cooking ground bonds and then get like 700, 800k an hour profit. Crafting has some interesting ways. There are... Jewelry ways, you can start with very low crafting, I believe. You can even go like as low as like 7 crafting if you start with just the basic gold jewelry. But going all the way up from starting with gold jewelry, you can go to like sapphire, emerald, even the ruby and diamond jewelry and make decent money. Even some dragonstone, depending on just the grand exchange prices, you can make pretty good uh, profits. These profits can range anywhere from something like 50k an hour if you're starting with like the very basics of gold jewelry. All the way up to maybe a few hundred thousand with the, the higher ones with 
the diamond, the ruby, and possibly even dragonstone. The next method for crafting is also pretty good. You can get about 400k GP, maybe like 500k on uh, a good margin, but is it's making drift nets. The only requirement here is to have Bone Voyage, Bone Voyage done and to have built the stash on Fossil Island as well as the loom. It just requires some nails, planks, a hammer, and I, th I think an iron bar, maybe a few iron bars or something like that. But the whole idea is that you just you, you bank on Fossil Island, you fill up your inventory with Jew Fiber, you go to the loom, you make the drift nets, and you just go right back to the bank and repeat. Farming is an incredible money maker with multiple different avenues. The thing with farming is that you can't really just farm a lot at a time. It's pretty recurring, so you, you can pl uh, lay down the seeds, and then you, you have to wait anywhere from 15 minutes to like e even a couple days, depending on what you're planting. But you'll, you'll see yields with most things that you plant. Uh, for example, the most common way to earn money, and it's very consistent, is with herb, uh, herb farming. As you can see in the clip right here, there are multiple different patches. There are a few that don't have any or barely have any requirements. There are a few that have quite a lot of requirements, and there's, there's also some like mid-level her patches. The point is, you know, you start with what you have, and you can, you can get quite a lot of her patches when your account's more built. This can be anywhere from, let's say, like, a, like 50k with a few her patches every hour and a half to even like two, three, 400k per run, like every hour and a half. So her runs are incredibly good. There are other methods too, such as farming jute fiber, which I think is like 70, 80k every time you farm. You can also collect cactus spines. You can farm white berries. You can even plant some fruit trees like coconuts and papayas and then collect those fairly regularly. What I've done typically is I will just tie everything to my herb runs because those are the big consistent money maker for me. And I will just get all of my equipment, all of my teleports. And as I do my herb runs, I will also go collect my uh, cactus spines in Alcarid. I'll go get the white berries in the farming guild or next to the, the Ardon uh, monastery teleport. You can also uh, incorporate your jute runs into that as well as your fruit trees. But farming is a very consistent money maker. I feel like if you're not farming and you're a member, you're, you're pretty foolish to not be utilizing this skill because it's a great way just to afford bonds passively or just uh, add a, a, like one or two mil a day comfortably. Fishing is quite easy. Most of the methods are pretty AFK, so if you're working, well, I can't condone working and playing at the same time, but if you are occupied and can't spend all of your attention on the game, fishing is an incredible way to earn some decent GP an hour. Early levels are not going to net you much. Like lobsters, uh, you can expect to get 30 to 50k. 30k if you're free to play, 50k a little more if you're fishing somewhere like Catherby in, membership, in, in the members area. When you get to level 65, you can look for something like Karambawans, Karam uh, which take a bit of uh, prereqs. You have to get the actual Karambawanji, which are like a little fish, which you actually use as bait. But Karambawans can get to 175k. And then in the 80s, there are a few different methods, like Infernal, ear, infernal Eels, which are shown in, in the clip here. Sacred Eels are also very similar. It's on the, uh, the same island that you go to Zolora uh, with. Uh, it's a very similar method where you just, it's, it's a very AFK way to earn two, 300k an hour. Uh, and then if you're looking for a little bit more with fishing, you can look for something like dark crabs, which are in the deep wild. So you, you have to come prepared or be willing to lose something. But in the little skilling area in like level 55 wild at the very, very top, there are some dark crab spawns. This can be up to 300k an hour and is pretty good money in terms of fishing. But again, there, it comes with some costs. Fletching is one of those skills where it's pretty consistent no matter what level you are. Granted, the, the, the very, very bottom levels are not really any profit. However, this is a very skill, a very fast skill to level. Uh, what I mean by this skill is consistent as in you're never going to earn too much, but pretty much from relatively early levels, maybe like the 40s and 50s with maple bows, all the way up until 99, you're pretty much going to earn 1 to 200k, maybe a little more, a little less. There are some other methods that can sometimes be good, sometimes not. It's purely dependent on the actual grand exchange prices, but uh, you can earn ridiculously high experience rates on fletching um, and even be profitable, such as like uh, fletching broad bolts or making maple longbows or U longbows. Uh, you can, there's two parts to the longbow making, as you can see in these clips. Uh, the first was actually taking the logs and turning them into the unstrung version of the bow. 
The second clip is the part where you add the string to the bow to turn it into a bow. So uh, for the most part, you're not going to earn more than like one to two, maybe 300k an hour. Uh, but again, this, this skill is, is uh, very fast. Purple is actually a really interesting skill where it's traditionally extremely expensive to level. And you can get some pretty ridiculous experience rates, anywhere from like a couple hundred thousand to an hour to half a million an hour, uh, if you're really willing to sink some GP into it. However, because this skill is so traditionally a skill where people just throw money at it to level it up, there are some ways to kind of middleman yourself and make some pretty good profit. Uh, the first is making uh, unfinished potions. So in this clip right here, you can see I'm making Abento unfinished potions. You do need some kind of capital to be able to do this because the herbs themselves cost a good amount. But if you do have some startup capital, let's say a few million, ideally, if you need to be able to do like the full hour, I think it's something like 12 or 13 million. But you can see three, four, five, maybe even 600,000 GP an hour just making these unfinished potions. All you need is just the herbs and the water, uh, the, the vial of water. You just add the, the, the herbs to the vial of water, make the unfinished potion, bank it, rin rinse and repeat, and then sell them off. Sometimes these don't sell immediately, but they will pretty much all sell in big batches as uh, some high-level player is just saying, hey, okay, it's time to get 99 Herbore, and they just throw a bunch of money at it. Another way is also a way that you can train your own herb lore, however, it's very click intensive, and that's clicking, uh, it's, it's cleaning herbs in mass. Basically, I think you can clean something crazy like five to 10,000 herbs an hour, maybe even a little more if you're really good. But you can get pretty good experience rates. I think I remember doing quite a lot of this on my way to 80 herb lore. I think with some herbs you can clean like and get 200k XP an hour, maybe even like 250k an hour but you are really clicking a lot and you can also earn some decent profit depending on the margins between the actual grimy herb and the clean herb. This can be anywhere from maybe like 50k GP an hour to maybe even like four or 500 uh, thousand. Hunter's a pretty consistent money maker with varying methods. As early as 53, you can start hunting regular chinchampas and then you can move to uh, six, uh, level 63 with red chinchampas. And finally, 80 plus, you can hunt black chimichampas. This can be anywhere from 200k with the greys or the regular chimichampas up to like 500k with the red. And then even a little more is up to like 650, 700k with black chimichampas. These are a decent XP an hour, as well as uh, the pro probably the, one of the most common methods being uh, birdhouse runs. Birdhouse runs are something they should be doing fairly regularly. I tie them along with my herb runs. But as soon as you have a uh, fossil island open, there are four birdhouse spawns or locations on the island. All you do is you just uh, get a dig site pendant, you teleport, and you just run through the four birdhouses. It takes maybe two minutes. It's more like just over a minute. You'll get anywhere from like three to maybe like 6k hunter XP. So if you think about the actual time investment versus the, the activity involved, it takes no time at all. And as w with doing the birdhouse runs, you're going to get 50 to, 70, 50 to 70k GP every single run, more if you get lucky on the actual seeds that you get from the bird nests as well. Even though magic is a combat skill, I figured because there are so many ways to make money with magic, I would include it. For example, there are a few different ways in the standard spellbook, such as in front of you, high alking. I will leave a resource below which will help you uh, decide what items to buy from the Grand Exchange so that you can alk to a profit. You're not going to get anything crazy. Maybe you're going to get a couple hundred GP per item. Uh, so you can sometimes get lucky and get a few thousand GP per item that you alk, and you're going to be alking a couple of thousand items uh, per hour. But you're never going to see anything too crazy, but this is a very uh, low-intensity training, uh, training method. A couple of the methods that I, I think are very worth mentioning are on the Lunar Spellbook, so it's a little higher, but at 70... Uh, 77, I believe, you can super glass make, as you can see right here. It's basically just turning giant seaweed and buckets of sand into a ton of molten glass. And in this next clip, you can, there's, uh, the next level 78, there is one called tanning leather. This can be extremely profitable, but it does require a good amount of startup capital to purchase all the dragon hide. As you can see here, uh, it tans five hide at a time, and I'm tanning red dragon hide here. So uh, I, I believe tanning leather can, any, can be anywhere between like a few hundred K an hour to even somewhere crazy like one and a half mil an hour, two mil an hour, depending on grand exchange rates. And then lastly, I, I, think, I, would, I, I think it's also worth mentioning that uh, you can make um, different tabs 
primarily teleport tabs. There are some other ones, especially with the Arceus spellbook, that are a little more involved, such as making Barrows tabs. They can get you up to like 800k an hour to a mil an hour, but they do have a good amount of requirements. Definitely look into that if you're interested. However, in this clip, I am making teleport to house tabs. They sell very frequently. So many players in the game use these, and yet it continues to be a relatively decent money maker. Um, the the barrier to entry is quite low. You need to be able to buy some soft clay, which is cheap, and have a, a few thousand law runes. But for the most part, you can make like 250k, 350k an hour just making teleports uh, teleports to home. Oddly enough, I think mining is commonly thought as no longer a skill to make money, but there are still some pretty decent ways to make money at all levels. Uh, starting even at level 22, as long as you have fossil island access, you can go to the volcano area, mine volcanic ash. This is about 125k an hour. Uh, you're never going to need to bank because you can just drop the soda ash, but for the most part, you just mine until you're, you've pretty much had enough and uh, go sell all the volcanic ash. This ash is valuable because everyone uses it for herb runs or farming in general. The next is a skill uh, needed. You need level 40. This is also a very good one. As long as you have access to Shiloh Village, you can mine gemstones. Uh, I think people really sleep on this method, but this can even get you 500k an hour. Uh, it helps to have a gem back here from Motherload Mine, but it's definitely not a necessity. It just makes you bank a little, a little more often. But... Um, you, you just go to the gem rocks, as you can see right here, you just mine until you're full and go to the bank, rinse and repeat. Uh, you're mainly looking for the best gems that you can get, so the diamonds, red topaz are really good, even all the rubies and, uh, and uh, emeralds are going to add up. Mining basalt is also a pretty decent method, although it has some hefty requirements. Uh, you're going to need access to Weiss and the resulting dungeon underneath, but if you do have access, uh, you know, all you need to do is teleport over and you can mine basalt. It's just the, 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 the rocks with the black veins here, and you can get maybe like 400k, 500k an hour doing so. And then finally, I think everyone kind of dreams of being able to do this, but mining runite ore is in theory very high GP an hour at 700k, but uh, the sad state of the game is that runite rocks pretty much wherever you go are riddled with bots. Uh, you're going to world hop all over the place. You're going you're gonna to find a lot of empty rocks, or you're going to run into another bot trying to uh, just grab the ore before you can. So I wouldn't recommend against Runite Ore, but I mean, hey, if you want to try, then more power to you. There are other methods like uh, in the wilderness and in other spots in Gjellnar as well where you can you can get a good amount of Runite. Runecrafting is very famously a gigantic money maker. Unfortunately, you're not going to see too much money at early levels just because of the way that Runecrafting works. Uh, the way Runecrafting works is that the higher level you are, you're going to reach some thresholds to instead of getting one rune per essence that you use, you can perhaps get two or three, as well as the very high and in demand combat runes like Bloods and Wraths are typically, uh, well, are exclusively in the top levels of runecrafting, so such as like 70 and above. So at 27, you can start crafting cosmic runes. You're not going to see anything too crazy per hour. Um, that will change a little more at 59 when you're able to get double. And then at 75, you will get even more just because of how the way uh, runecrafting works, works and you're able to hold more essence with the pouches. Uh, a decent agility level such as like 66 and uh, good teleports like 67-ish magic help considerably with uh, crafting cosmics. At 77, you're able to craft blood runes. There are a few different methods to do so. You can go into uh, Arceus and do the, uh, the essence blocks mining from the big like spire of essence and then running to the blood altar that one that method is extremely afk you, you pretty much only need to pay attention to it maybe like every minute or so uh the method that i'm doing is more gp an hour up to two mil an hour uh it does have some high requirements but again rune crafting is one of those things that you know it takes some effort to get to the really really large money makers and then finally at level 95 if you're able to make it all the way you can craft wrath runes which are over two mil an hour these are the top combat runes of the game. If Personally, this is my opinion, but if I was to guess, we're going to see more inclusion in Wrath runes going forward with new magic weapons. But again, this is years in the future. Uh, just because I only say that because Wrath runes have only been introduced in the last few years. Smithing is a, is a pretty good way to earn money. There are two main methods that I think people use to, to both train and possibly make money during smithing. 
The first one is smithing cannonballs. Uh, it's pretty low level. I think you can start as low as like 35. Uh, you just need dwarf cannon done to get the mold. You're going to see about 150k an hour. This is an extremely AFK way to train smithing and also earn money. You know, uh, previously years ago, I had up to like four accounts that were all training uh, smithing this way. And I was earning, I think, like 250k at the time. So I was earning about a mil an hour. Uh, you, you can easily scale this up to even more accounts if you're interested. I think it's also worth mentioning with smithing cannonballs, if, you're, if you do Giant's Foundry and you're able to get 2,000 points, you can get the bigger ammo mold, which allows you to smith double. This increases your yield something by like 250k. So you're, you're looking at probably like four or 500k an hour uh, if you're able to get this, this double ammo mold, uh, just smithing ca uh, cannonballs. Again, extremely AFK. I highly recommend this method. Uh, another way to make money is through Blast Furnace in this clip right here. You can see uh, you basically, it's basically just crafting the bars at whatever level that you can do. So you can start as low as like steel. I think steel is the first one that's actually profitable. And then moving up uh, through all of them, through Mithril, through all of the higher bars except gold. Gold is famously used to train smithing very fast here because of the goldsmith gauntlets. So avoid gold. But for the most part, uh, you, can use, you can do steel, mithril, adamant, or runite bars and earn up to a mil an hour just uh, running the bars through here. Thieving is oddly a very high money maker as well with some of the top skilling methods in the game for, uh, for earning GP being uh, thieving as well as one of the, uh, a few of the early levels actually earning some pretty good money as well. Uh, starting off here, you can see I'm pickpocketing ham members uh, you can do this as low as level 10 thieving. Uh, the way thieving works is obviously with any of these, the higher the thieving level you have, the better. Um, the rogue's outfit also always helps, except in this part, uh, just because your inventory fills it with junk very quickly. But for the other methods, like I'm going to show you right after this method, you uh, having the rogue's outfit is a necessity because it doubles your loot. Uh, the way So the, the way uh, ham, the ha pickpocketing ham members works is like, for the most part, the stuff you get from ham members is all junk. The only thing you care about is a 1 in 50 pickpocket chance, and that is easy clue. Uh, doing easy clues is actually about a mil an hour. Uh, you're not going to get any crazy experience doing this. You're probably going to get like maybe 15, 20k thieving experience an hour. So for the most part, you're not going to get many thieving levels, but you are going to get about a mil an hour, and that's just because you're getting uh, a lot of easy clues uh, pickpocketing ham members. Moving forward, next is pickpocketing master farmers. This is pretty low to start, although you're not going to see tremendous success until you get higher, but you can start this at level 38. Uh, I do highly, highly recommend the rogue equipment again, and you will need 50 thieving for that, as well as 50 agility, but the rogue outfit will give you tremendous value no matter what you are thieving, except have members. But you're probably going to see upwards of a mil an hour at the higher thieving levels. You're definitely going to get less as you are closer and closer to the minimum level of 38, but it is still a great way to get good seeds and especially good if you're an Iron Man. At level, I believe, 85, you're able to pickpocket elves. Elves are, I believe, the best skilling moneymaker in the game at three mil an hour. You need priftiness access, so it does require some skill, uh, well, a pretty large amount of quest completions and stats. But if you are able to, uh, to get there, uh, elves are extremely profitable. And then also a few levels below at 82, you can pickpocket Vyres in Myrditch, I believe, or somewhere around there in Mauritania with the, the vampires. That is about two to two and a half mil an hour. Again, these last two methods, you absolutely need the outfit for the double drop because th with these methods, you're gonna go an hour to three hours with no drop. And as soon as you get that drop, having rogue's outfit is going to double the loot. So the loot is going to be something like three or four mil. And then instead of getting that, you're going to get seven or eight mil. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy your timescaping and I will see you next time. Take care.